Hello everybody, my name is Kayla and I'd like to welcome you to your recovery. In my previous videos I've talked about active trigger points in the upper trapezius and SCM muscles found in the tops of both shoulders and along either side of the neck. Recently I've had to treat some different trigger points in other areas of my upper body so I wanted to share some information now about trigger points found in the mid-back, along the sides, and in the ribs, in the axillary region, and also along the chest. I'm going to demonstrate the massage techniques that I use to access, identify, and deactivate these trigger points. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like what I'm doing and that I should do more of it. Be sure to subscribe for access to future content, and as always, my comments are open to questions and discussion. Let's get started with some information about these trigger points. The trapezius is a large, superficial back muscle prone to developing trigger points in several different areas. While the upper trap points are fairly easy to identify and associate with the symptoms being experienced, the low traps can be more of a challenge to understand. Located towards the middle of the back, in between the scapula and the spine, the low trap points will radiate pain into the upper traps. They can also activate satellite trigger points found in the shoulder, ribs, armpits, and chest. The low trap points are an often overlooked underlying cause for neck, shoulder, and arm pain. By treating my low trap points and the satellite trigger points surrounding it, I've been able to recently reduce my neck pain by 70%. We're going to talk about some of these other satellite trigger points and then we'll move along to the massage techniques. There are 17 muscles that connect to the shoulder blades, including the trapezius. Any of these muscles can develop active trigger points and are prone to doing so when the trapezius muscles are already dysfunctional. I personally treat any point of tension that I can identify in the shoulder blades. I had a scapular deep tissue massage a few days ago that showed me how many of my symptoms are coming directly from this area. I especially noticed at how loud my left ear tinnitus became during treatment, which leads me to believe that by continuing to treat the scapular trigger points, I can make some real progress with overcoming my tinnitus. For me, the most aggravating trigger point is located in the latissimus dorsi, or lat muscle, which runs down the back and along the side. I also have some trigger points in the serratus anterior muscle, which is located in the ribs. Trapezius and scapular dysfunction inevitably leads to pectoral muscle involvement. The chest muscles develop trigger points in an effort to shorten and help stabilize the scapula. Tight chest muscles will limit the range of motion of the arm. Muscle tension in this region will also decrease the space that important nerve bundles and blood vessels have to function. I know it seems like there are a lot of areas to treat, and this is true, but managing these trigger points in a single massage session is fairly easy to accomplish because of how closely located everything is and the specific techniques that we use to do trigger point massage. Let's go ahead and talk about some of those techniques now. My preferred technique for treating active trigger points is trigger point pressure massage. Trigger point pressure is when static or held pressure is applied directly to a trigger point. Ideally, the pressure is increased and maintained until the trigger point releases. Milking a trigger point is similar, but utilizes a back and forth motion to work the trigger point. I enjoy alternating between these two techniques to effectively work points of tension in the body. Trigger point pressure massage can be performed manually by using the hands or by using a massage tool such as the back knobber. Another technique that I often utilize during trigger point massage is skin rolling. Skin rolling is performed by grasping the skin in between the thumb and the fingers and working to gently lift the skin away from surrounding tissues while using a continual forward rolling motion. Skin rolling is highly effective at breaking apart myofascial adhesions, especially adhesions that have formed between the skin and superficial muscles of the body. Myofascial release encourages better circulation, which can help to clear trigger points from affected areas of the body. Therapeutic massage often includes a degree of movement. Movement will activate muscles and increase direct access to areas of the body in need of treatment. 
one simple movement that can be performed to increase treatability of trigger points in the scapular and pectoral region is to simply raise the arm. Arm movement requires shoulder movement and pectoral muscle activation. With the arm raised, the area of treatment becomes more accessible, which enables identification and treatment of trigger points either from the back in the scapular area or anteriorly in the front of the chest. Access to the axillary region makes treatment of all of these trigger points much easier. Here is a real-time massage that demonstrates how I incorporate these various techniques into a single session. With the arm positioning, it's not exactly important whether it be to the front, side, behind the back, or over the shoulder. Anything that causes the scapula to protract or move away from the spine enhances access to the muscles underneath the shoulder blade. I generally put my arm up here, grasp the shoulder blade, palpate so I can feel, identify a point of tension, and apply my trigger point pressure. Do some milking as well. Palpate, identify, pressure, and milk. Now this is for the scapula and I can get all the way up into that scapula and even down. Do my serratus right here and do a little bit of, I like doing skin rolling in this area because I have that you know, bit of skin. That's my lap muscle point. That one is very tender for me. Pressure, milking, rolling. With the arm up, that pec muscle is going to be engaged. Palpate, identify, pressure, milk. And those just radiate all through my, through my shoulder joint here and through my shoulder blade. And that is how I massage this entire area, which just treats all of these trigger points right here. And now I'll show you a little bit of work from the back on that low trap point and some different scapular points using the back knobber. All right, from the back, I'm going to show how I use my back knobber tool to work on some of these trigger points in the scapula. And just put it right back there, and I feel that, I already feel the point of tension has been identified. Apply trigger point pressure, trigger point milking, and I could literally just sit here and do this until that trigger point releases. It takes different amount of time and different massage intensities to get released. I'm just, you know, identify the point of tension, treat, you can palpate so you feel around, identify another point of tension, apply the pressure, just, oh, just do this in the whole area. I keep coming back to this one. This one is really tender. Get that low trap point kind of hook under and push forward on the hook of the back knobber. Can work all the way into that shoulder blade. I like using the back knobber for these points on the shoulders. That way I'm not straining or overstretching to try and treat them manually. This is where the back knobber really comes in handy. My future videos will have a large focus on massage technique. In addition to more self-management tips, I'll be sharing the techniques that I am using to treat clients here in my private massage practice located in Northeast Ohio. Thank you so much for spending time with me today to learn about massage techniques that are effective for managing and treating active trigger points. If there is a massage technique that you would like to learn more about, or perhaps an area of the body that you want to learn how to massage more efficiently, please let me know in the comments. 
Maybe one day I can include some of that information in a future video. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.